Finished is a very subjective thing, like like miniature painting and like art in general. Yeah. For me, it's finished. If I'm if I get fed up painting it, <laughs> then that thing is getting its base rim painted and he is done. Is the airbrush cheating? You wouldn't paint a wall in a house with a triple zero, you know. You'd use you'd use you'd use, you'd use a roller for that. If you know? you're a real painter, if you're a real, I put the Age of Darkness box and I was like. My first real project, my first ever army. I'm going to paint it to box art level. I've painted three tactical points. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get started with today's topic then, which is when or if is a model finished? So is a model ever truly finished? Is it okay to go back and paint old stuff? Should you go back and paint old stuff? All that good stuff. I am extremely conflicted on this question. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're only conflicted because you know the right answer. Yeah, I know the right answer. But you continually... But, but as, a, as a painter, I'm like, it's not where I want it to be. Um, and I know exactly where this is being angled at. Um, so let's just get it off the cuff straight away. I am going to repaint the gems on Dante <laughs> and also re reglaze the axe. I've said it. I'm doing it. I'm sorry, Matt Kennedy, if you're watching. Yeah, um, so this, this was the big conversation was that like, I do think once once a model is declared finished, it's it not should... like you put a rosette on it and go, like, <laughs> it's, not like you go it's not like you go, you're done now. Well, I'm not going to be funny. You entered it into a competition. That, that's, that's about not... as close to that as you can get. I think once, yeah, once, <laughs> once it's declared finished, you should, it should always be finished. Once it's considered finished, um, by you, which is a completely subjective thing, by the way. So this is a very difficult topic to actually answer because every answer is, is going to be yeah. personal. Like when when is a model finished? It's a like such a broad, crazy question. But I think whenever that is, yeah. once it's finished, it should be finished. Yeah, I don't think there's like a correct answer for like when it is finished. Yeah. But like you said, there should be a turning point where you're like, okay, it's finished now. Whether that means yeah. to you, yeah, that's a great time. To and, stop but I do opinion, think, yeah, just to get that out there. Yeah. Um, and I know. I know Matt will, will agree because he literally told you this. Yeah, um, no, I know. It's good. Once it's finished, it's there and it will always be a reminder of where your painting was at at that time. No, you're I think right. that's such a good bit of advice. I would imagine um, that a lot of people, I hear this a lot and this is definitely true for me, it's like people regret selling or losing or trading their early old model old yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Because you've got nothing that. to compare to. Yeah. I can um, testament to that because I, I've sold loads of stuff in the past and I'm... I've looked back and gone, I had a fully painted this army or I had a fully painted this army or I'd done this. Yeah. I think it's a great reminder of where you've come from as well, isn't it? Because like it is, I always yeah. say my biggest thing is the only person you should compare yourself to is yourself. Yeah. And you can't compare yourself to yourself if you have you're constantly I mean, changing your old model. Yeah, it's one thing if you've got like photos to look at or whatever, but if you're like right. going back and repainting like the first model you ever did, I think you'll probably look back on that with regret. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I am gonna just counter the that that one one tiny bit. So you you the way you mentioned it, man, the way you said about it being it being a direct representation of where you are at currently as a painter, I hundred percent agree with. The reason why I want to make changes, or the reason why I would entertain and go and make changes again, is that because of the circumstances of the painting of that, and that it was under more strenuous circumstances and time constraints, I was not painting to the best of my ability for the time involved. So typically the gems and bits and bobs on there, they're not painted as good as I know that I can paint gems. That is not a direct representation of where I am at as a painter at that point. No, so but I think it is a representation of what you managed to paint in that circumstance, which yeah, is still worthy yeah, of, I, I get of that. Yeah, I do get that. Of yeah. reflection and looking back at it. Yeah, no, I, like I, do, I, I do get that. Yeah. But no one's going to tell you, no one's going to actually tell you off for uh, going no, back I know and, that. and, and hey, Matt Kennedy will. Matt Kennedy will, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, um, but yeah, I, I just, I for me, it's a, it's a niggle at the back of my mind that I know, and it's frustrating for me because of my mindset and the way that I, for me, I'll, I'll constantly look at it and be like, I know they're not as good as they can be or, or that I know that I can do. And I, I think that that thought, though, is like the best part of having them there because like they're I sat there and you're I like, don't know. so I've got a couple of models that I painted like a couple of years ago, whatever. And I've never really thought too much about this, to be honest, because I'm normally so busy. It's not even like cross my mind to go back and repaint stuff. But I kind of feel like if I when I do look at it and I'm like, oh, it's nowhere near as good as I'm painting now. Yeah. I don't go, oh, okay, I should repaint it then. When the piece... For, for when... me, it's so rare that I actually finish a model anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, which is why I resent this topic so much. Um, was that like, 
I, I, I couldn't bear to, if I'm going to spend any time, I'm going to start something new. Cause it's like, if I actually manage to finish it, then yeah. it's staying there and I'm being proud of the fact that it's finished. Yeah. No, look, um, I, I, I get, it's I get different. That. The, uh, that's why I think the, the context behind it, all of this it is so important because it's like, it's all, this is probably the most subjective question that we'll, we'll, we'll answer on here because it's probably, like, yeah. because it's like, um, whether something's finished or not relies uh, depends entirely on what you want to get out of it. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. like yeah. if you are entering it into a competition, um, then you're going to have higher standards of when it's finished than if you want to play a game tomorrow or, or something like that. So it's still like, I don't know. I still see value in, even if you don't think it's the best thing, um, it, it was finished enough to enter into a competition under the circumstances it was it was entered under and pa- painted under. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's like a little time capsule, isn't it? So I still see value in that, but it, it, it is. But when the rest of the model is the best you painted, and yeah. those bits that you know you can paint better aren't painted to match the equilibrium of the rest of the model. That's the frustrating point for me. Yeah. Like, and I think I can't. I if if I can do those bits, or if I do those bits and get them to where I'm happy with them, then I will consider it the finish and done. Mm. That's the thing. Um, but it's because I know that on other things. So was you not happy with it in that moment as well? Yeah. Is that the difference? Here? Yeah, 100%. So the difference yeah. is that it's not that that was, because you say like, oh, my mindset at the time was this is finished. Yeah. Whereas now I think it's not good enough. But if in the moment you're not happy with it and you finish it. Just, sorry, before you finish this, I think, because we did say we were going to elaborate on this story and I feel like we've dove in halfway. Do you want to just elaborate the full story on the model really, that we're talking really about? Quick, so, really quick. Because the great tale of James painting in the hotel. I didn't, I didn't think we were going to be, I didn't think we were going to be talking as much about this specific well, model I think it's as we relevant, were. I think it's oh, I'm not saying thing. that's a bad thing. Oh, we're talking but, about that Dante. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the other Dante because no, you mentioned no, that. no. So, so oh, really, I, meant really, the, really, I meant the. I meant the. I don't know what. He's, the, J- the James. Is, James is such a diehard Blood Angels fan that he's painted so many Dantes. Yeah. I actually thought he was talking about a different Dante. No, he and he's one. also he somehow wormed it that we we forced him not to talk about Blood Angels last week, and he somehow now all we're banging on about is Dante. Right. But, I'm just gonna. I'll just do quick synopsis. Painted the new Dante for Warhammer Vest. You know, we were very fortunate to get it, obviously, in advance from Games Workshop. Big thank you. Um, I wanted to paint it and do it justice as my favorite model in the game and in the in the IP. Fest was obviously around the corner. Wanted to paint it for GD. Had limited time frame. Balanced everything around work and obviously painting. And then got, got him done to a point that I was happy with. At, at, you know, but I was painting in the hotel room the night before entry and i entered on the sunday which is the last day um and i got up at five or well, actually re woke me up at 5 a.m and said get painting and i was like oh, okay i got up at five o'clock in the morning and done about two or three hours on it before then getting ready and going to best and entering it and even then i still wasn't happy with the gems but it got to the point where i was like so it was a rushed situation of course it was yeah because i wanted to, to explain it, that thing is, but i wanted to present it because i was it's my favorite thing my favorite character favorite model i love the new model blah blah, blah. i wanted to present it after i put all that work in and i didn't want to stress everybody out around me because they knew I was having to paint late night, early morning, whatever, blah, blah, every night in the week lead up to it, blah, blah, you know. So yeah, I entered it. I wasn't 100% happy with it for obvious reasons we've explained, but I, but getting back to the topic at hand that this episode is all about, which is when is a model finished? For me, that model will be finished when I do the things to the same standard as the rest of the model. And then, and then I can look at it and go, that's a moment in time. That's where it's, that's the best model I've painted at this point in time. And I can always look back at it. But those little things will always niggle me if I don't sort them to where I think that they should be to so match the rest of the model. That's So that's a model being finished when it's painted to, when you look at it and you go, I literally couldn't paint it any better than this. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. But it's like, so there's certain contexts where that won't be the case. Like we were talking about previously about when you were painting your knights yeah. for, um, the tournament. for the tournament. Yeah. Like, how did you decide they were finished? I had no more time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so no, I, I, they they were for the purpose that they were, and, and uh, you know, getting onto like sort of army painting and things like that. Like that, I think that sometimes army painting has this overall lapping of like, oh, it has to be easy or quick or whatever, blah blah. I think having a really, really well painted, super consistent, high end army is a beautiful thing. Mm. You know, it's a thing that we do as a company. You know, it's something that we really, really pride ourselves on. Um, it's one of the one of the <laughs> reasons we exist. Really, is that there's obviously a demand for it because. I think a lot of people would assume that um, we tend to paint 
smaller projects and and characters yeah yeah we are we, we do a lot of armies yeah like yeah. big armies beautifully painted armies as well yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um and it's like so there's obviously a desire for that from people there I, is a desire for that do you know how i know that because i bought the uh i bought the age of darkness box and i was like my first real project, my first ever army. I'm going to paint it to box art level. I've painted three tactical points. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that I think the reason which why, again is why we exist. Yeah. <laughs> I, I genuinely think the reason why that is, and I think that why that will always be the case, is because people. The first thing you see getting into this, if you go down the route of obviously GW, even sort of other manufacturers and things like that, is you see the box art, or you see these amazing articles in game in or in White Dwarf or magazines or on websites and things like that, and seeing a really well presented, super consistent, high end, meticulous army is something that we all aspire to have in our collection the things that come behind that the time investment the skilling the skill requirement the understanding of pain all those kind of things that that's so such a huge part of it that it makes that reality when it comes to actually physically doing it a lot harder um which is why there is you know i would say that for tournaments and things maybe you don't see such a high end of painting because it is more about the gaming aspect but also conversely it. like on the when is something finished obviously that means something different to different people and if your entire objective is i want to place for a game then finish to you is a standard that you are happy playing correct. a yeah. game with. Yeah, Three correct. colors yeah. and based and yeah, yeah, yeah. then that's finished. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with that at all whatsoever. Um, however, you know, if, if you are wanting to have something that is like you see in a magazine or like you see in a, in, in a, in a, in a publication or whatever the case may be, that I don't think that, that shouldn't be something that you should be unhappy to game with. You know, you should, yeah. you, I think that's just as important. I think where the, the conflict comes for people is like, I think a lot of people really, really want, the army uh, to that level like for themselves they're like i really want to paint this well and then that's also kind of why you see a lot so many unfinished armies and then equally like that kind of leads to more unhappiness because people are upset about the fact that their army's not finished and they're playing with like you know gray marines and then some marines that look that look great so it's like it's such a sliding scale isn't it because like if you say oh when is something finished it's like going back to topics we've touched on before about like bring bring yourself happiness in the hobby is like would you be happier if you just had everything done or would you be happy if you had like some stuff done really, really well, and then some stuff like you hadn't even started yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It depends in in certain circumstances. It is is done, but because for me, perfect. like I said, with like my Age of Darkness box, is like I I've gone in that with the mindset of like this. Would you rather a... just have it fully painted by now? Yeah, yeah. I mean that that is the conflict, isn't it? I mean, as a as a display painter, that is obviously a conflicting point for me, and I don't I don't play the games, so like my whole objective of even buying that box in the first place was like I wanted a display level, like insanely good looking like really box art quality army, army. Yeah. but yeah, I am. I am annoyed and frustrated at the fact of I don't have that much time. And over a year later, I've painted, like I said, I painted three or I think maybe four tactical marines out of the entire box. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think finished is a very subjective thing. Like like miniature painting and like art in general outside outside the realms of miniature painting or even our industry. For me, it's finished. If I'm if I get fed up painting it, <laughs> then, then that thing. That thing is getting his base room painted and he is done. Yeah. But then then having said that, I think like there's certain things out there, like for example, Slap Chop that gets talked about all the time. Um, I think that's a perfect avenue to get things to a point that are finished where you can step away from it and be very happy with the result that you've executed. You know, Again, without... it's to do with the goal. If you go in, yeah. going, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slap chop this army. Yeah. Then you will be able to say it's finished quicker Correct, because yeah, yeah. if you go in with that thing and you want it to look absolutely incredible like box art, then you're not going to be finished for a while. This is why I've never got into gaming is because like the thing that I really envy like on the side of gaming is like people who, I, I wish, I so, so, so wish that I could just build an army, spray them all black and then just play the damn game. Yeah. Because like as someone who's never played the game and I want to get into the game, I've put this like barrier up of like I've got nothing, to paint all these models. Yeah, but there's first. nothing wrong. There's nothing. I know that's because there is that, something wrong with that. It's in my head. That's the paint, <laughs> but that's the painter side of you, though. That's exactly. the thing. Like, and the, I think the thing is, is like it, it's about wanting to present something for your games that you're proud of. And uh, look, you know, if you're first getting into it and you're just purely wanting to learn the game um, and play like your first game or whatever, like building the models or just even you know just literally getting them on the table is fine. But I think there's a there's such an overlap of 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 i don't want to say pride but yeah it is, it is like a pri putting something down on the table that you are that's something that unfortunately with, i can't yeah. relate to it's like because like i said i've never played the game yeah like i painted amazing 
that that moment for me is like I'll paint an amazing finished model and then so, I'll put it in the cabinet and I will never look at it again. So you've never had I've spent sixty hours on this character and it gets shot off the board turn one. So no, I've never... spent I've spent sixty <laughs> hours, I've spent sixty hours on a character and then the next morning I put it in a box and I send it yeah, away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is that as well. Yeah, but but no, like, I think I think the whole thing of like when's a model finished it, it is a hugely subjective thing. Uh, but you're quite right. The goal or the objective of what you're trying to paint it for should be the the, the determining factor that's what it should be um but then again in this whole myriad of different different uh, expectations of quality or you know what is perceived as finished and what isn't perceived as finished you could perceive a model as being finished or an army as being finished and someone else will look at it and go well no, they're not done or that you know my, the, the normal one that i go is oh the barrels aren't drilled or, the, or this isn't done you know or things like that it's quite know, humbling like, actually when i speak to like uh, some of my friends who are just sort of into this like very very Casually. Casually. And I was, yeah. I'm very casual. And like they'll paint like once a year because I kind of force them to. Yeah. yeah. So like they'll paint something. They'll be like, you know, like the le they'll paint the leather uh, pouch on like a marine. Yeah. yeah. Like I painted it brown. It's done. Yeah. And I'm like, but. <laughs> but if, but if, Ed, if, Ed, if Ed's watching this, he'll be triggered because he'll be like, that button on the pouch is not painting metallic. You know? <laughs> yeah. It means so many different things to so many different people. I mean, yeah. like I said, I mean, that is, uh, it is about what you're doing it for, isn't it? I mean, yeah, what correct. Objective yeah. Is. Um, yeah. But like, do you think that we touched on it a bit? Do do you guys have regrets of like uh, getting rid of some stuff that you you finished when you when you was earlier on and like not being able to look back on that stuff? There is a story I can tell. My fatey dying warrior army. I spent loads of time um, making a really cool iron warrior, a really thematic iron warrior army, um, and I sold it. Regretted selling it. Then when it was shipped, it was a porch theft off of someone's uh, oh. someone's drive. Um, so that was a nightmare because the person didn't even get the army that I sold them. Um, obviously, that's no through no, no fault of, of of mine or through the through the buyer, but it was a porch theft in the states, and um, and then I had to go through like the police department in their town. And blah, blah, blah. long story short, the it got cleared out of a house that was that was condemned, basically put on the front of the drive, and it was crushed in the back of the dust cart. So, so no one has it. So no one has it. So it, it it's really sad. Like, I, you know, because not only did I sell it and then regret selling it, I then found out that all my work had then been destroyed and the person who I sold it to couldn't, <laughs> oh, even, couldn't even enjoy it. You know, like, so, so that's... So that, you might as well have just taken the bottles <laughs> and just put them in the bin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there was there was a thing with that. I remember when that when we were first um, working out what had happened. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, we were like, yeah, talking to the local police over in America and stuff like that. And it, I remember at one point there was there was like a sighting. Yeah, it, it, and, there, there was and, a camera. And, and someone was like, oh no, no, you're no, right. Some, the case. Someone had yeah, said, the case. yeah, because we, we had pictures of the case that it was in, and it had stickers over it, so it was like really specific. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, obviously, if it has these stickers, then it's that case. And uh, I can't remember how solid of a oh, of I a saw a photo of was. it. So I saw a photo of it. In some the guy had in the said shop, that yeah. he saw someone. Um, they they went in the shop and tried to sell it. I think try, didn't they? go into a Warhammer shop and try and sell the army. Like they didn't, they obviously didn't know what Warhammer yeah, yeah, was. To, like, but they, cash it in. So they just yeah. realised that it was Warhammer. So they thought they could go into a Warhammer shop and like sell the army. Um, obviously no one wanted to buy it. And then we put a post out about it, and we had someone email and go, "Oh, guy tried to sell a few of us that That's army." That's triple in, insult in, then. In so thing. you you didn't get it. They yeah. didn't get it. The shop didn't even want it, and then it was pinned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then because it because it became like a thing of um. I think the we, police were looking yeah. for it. Right. It became a bit of a hot, a hot, hot item. A hot item. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's when I think they they dumped it. They or, dumped it. Or, no, the, the the police found the person that done the porch theft, and um and uh it it the they got they left they ran from the house or whatever, and then the house was a rented house, and the new people that went in just, there, new people went in there, found all these cases and stuff, and then threw the cases out. Yeah. So that's a crazy. So story. yeah. So yeah. your army is that finished. When you're happy with it. When it gets crushed. <laughs> yeah, when it gets crushed. It. Do yeah. not sell your army. Yeah, do not sell your yeah, army. Yeah, I don't really have... I, I mean, like, yeah, I have my old... I have old models that I sold that I, I wish I didn't sell. But um, I think they not, nothing... You know, they didn't get crushed. As far as I'm aware, people are still enjoying them somewhere. <laughs> um, Very funny. But I, I always made sure to keep... So, like, even when I was selling a batch of models, for example, I always keep one or two from... That's, that, that's that, a great idea. That era, yeah. if you like. Because obviously, like, the reason stuff tends to get sold as well is usually, I'd imagine, some sort of financial constraint, mm -hmm. like, you're usually needing the money maybe to buy new models or whatever. So it's kind of unavoidable in some situations. I mean, I actually broke the sort of deadly sin that we've been speaking about 
at the time. So when I first started painting, um, I really didn't have a lot of money. I was at university and I just bought a couple of boxes of Marines and I painted them. And I wasn't happy with them. And then I was like, oh, I can strip them. Well, I sort of through, through research, I, I found out you could strip them. So I stripped them and I painted them again. I think actually I stripped them one more time after that and painted them again. But now looking back, I, have, I and then I actually sold the models after that. So I, I literally <laughs> yeah. have, I have a couple of like really haphazardly taken photos on my phone. Yeah, and that's yeah. all I have of my first painting models. And I really, really wish that I still had them around. I've yeah. still got like, um, yeah, say from like the first, the first tactical Marines or whatever that I did. I've even got one from when I was a, a, a like a child and it's, it's obviously it's awful. Um, <laughs> but I have like one of those from that 10. And then like, even from recently when I got, I got back in on seventh edition, which was the dark angels chaos yeah, box. Yeah. Um, That's a great box. Dark two Angels. separate things, dark angels and chaos. I'm not saying they're the same thing. They're yeah. two separate things. Um, sure, Joe, we believe you. Uh, agree in the comments. <laughs> the, <laughs> Disagree in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so like there was some obviously Dark Angels models in there that I painted and I've kept like one of those. Yeah. And, and when I sold them. It's a really smart idea doing that. that. Yeah. Because, yeah, um, yeah. you know, whoever is buying them obviously isn't buying a full set, but they're aware of that at the time of the sale. So if you're going on eBay after this episode, you see a bunch of nine man nine, squads nine for <laughs> sale. <laughs> it's probably me. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I've done that before. So I've always got something from, from the different yeah time period, but I've, yeah, I've stripped models before and regretted it as well. And, and stuff like that that being said though if i hadn't have done that i wouldn't have gotten better at painting mm. i don't think you, i think you need that i think you need um you know trying to putting it back to the topic at hand you need you need that closure on 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 models because it is that fixed point in time for the skill level that you're at um and it's, yeah. it's always good to reflect back to it i, I think, think regret is kind of unavoidable in the hobby as well oh yeah like i think so yeah. i think no one does the wrong decision like consciously do they like no, i mean no it's easy to say these things looking back but then like i said like if i hadn't repainted those models if, if i'd have finished those models and be like oh well i've got to buy another box okay well i haven't got any money for like another couple of months yeah yeah then i might have like just given up on the hobby as a whole it was only the first time i've ever painted no, so totally. obviously i don't regret what happened from it but it's a shame that i haven't got those models obviously yeah 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 no totally um so yeah, but I, yeah, regret and 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 closure on a project is, is are the things which uh, I think are part and parcel of, of miniature painting. I think that you know it's it hones you and develops you as a painter um, as 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 time progresses through your journey of, of miniature painting. So so yeah, right. Our new favorite segment then. It is time for question of the week. Question of the Thank week. Thank you everyone for submitting your comments. Have been uh, very interesting to comb over those. Yeah, uh, we have a. <laughs> Hot take one this time. Hot take. Come on. Let's we're, do it. we're back on the hot takes. Hot takes. This question is Is the airbrush cheating? Absolutely not, in my opinion. I think the only hot take would be if we said yes, yeah. right? Yeah. But we're not saying No, that. we're not saying I don't yes. think anyone's going to say yes. No, I think if you look at it that way, I think it's like anything. Like you wouldn't paint a wall in a house with a triple zero, you know, you'd use, you'd use, <laughs> you'd use, you'd use a roller for that. If you know? you're a real painter, if you're you a real painter, you are cool. That skirting board's great with that triple zero. Um, no, but I, I think, yeah, the, the whole cheating thing, I don't think it is. I think, um, why do you think people think that? Because they see it as a shortcut. It's a shortcut. I think, I think it's a mix of, of people don't understand the skill that it takes to use it properly. So they do think it's what they think is that makes everything easier. But, um, the reason not everyone uses it because of the price or something like that. So would you speculate that a lot of people who have that opinion haven't used one then? Potentially. I, I, or I could say that before I used one, I had that opinion. Or, mm. or it could be I, I bad experience. That, I thought the only reason that um, I was like, obviously they make, the, the best thing I compare it to was when, when I started DJing, I, I, uh, like, it was, uh, like 10 years ago or something now, the, the, there was a whole switch over happening of like whether you used vinyl records or most common thing in clubs was the CDs and it, even the CDs were switching over to digital. So if you're using a laptop or using USB sticks and stuff like that, there was this whole variety of different ways to do things. And, um, I almost see like using the, the vinyl records and learning on the vinyl records as, as mastering using a brush. And then these, uh, like the, airbrush come along which was like the usb sticks and stuff like that usb stick is the slap chop <laughs> yeah yeah exactly 100 percent, 100 percent. so and then what i what i initially thought was like yeah i'm just gonna learn vinyl and be like a legit OG. dj yeah um OG and DJ. then like first time i turned up to a club uh with like a bag of records and then just the next person after me i saw just walk over with a usb stick and stick it in i was like 
oh yeah okay maybe there is actually a bag of you must have looked like you stumbled out of a time machine i I think no i think that well no i mean the the place i was walking into looked like i was going through a time machine to be fair (laughs) it wasn't the most modern place but like I, i think what i'm getting at is that like I can completely see why someone would be like, oh, airbrush is cheating or it's just like lazy or, or something like that. I, I think same as when I thought that about like USB sticks and digital DJing, um, I think the the answer is probably that they don't fully understand that thing. Things a lot like brush painting as well, the airbrushes, because like you've got such a slight, I mean, you can use like a size one brush to do base coating or you can use it to do HI or you can use it to do stippling and like so many different things. It's yeah. like, if you look at the airbrushes, this sort of uh, one singular thing, which is, I guess people think of it in a certain way. There's a bit of a stigma around it, like that time saving, like Zenith Wolf thing, whatever. But then you look at people like, you know, like Angel Horaldez, like people do some nutty stuff with an airbrush that I really couldn't do. I've and like, even you, if you've I, got I, a really expensive airbrush, it's I, difficult. I, it's difficult. Yeah. I still think it's worth mastering. I, I don't think it's worth um, replacing your use of a brush with an airbrush. No, 100%. Like, you st- I think if you're going to be doing airbrush stuff, then still take the time to work out how you would use a brush to do those things mm. just ha- just for your own sake of becoming a better well some things as well that it's, i think a lot of people don't understand necessarily um, not necessarily through fault of their own but just like through it, like ignorance is like you can't use an airbrush for everything no like, you can't you can't, yeah. right. you can't use an airbrush to like paint the eyes on a face like it's not going to happen I, yeah. I've, I've had it on, on, on classes before uh, and i've had it when you know, people go oh well, yeah you have to win gd or to win a competition you have to uh, use an airbrush i'm like that's not the case at all whatsoever like mm. you know like it it has got as much as it's got stigma. It's also you're quite right. People do think that it's this thing that that instantaneously gives you an improvement. Like you can use an airbrush badly. You know you can do some bad stuff with an. Airbrush. I've done it. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> you like, can really. You it's know, a whole other thing. Um, to, I think that's something that I definitely didn't necessarily think of, and and I imagine a lot of people don't think of is that it's a whole other thing that you have to learn and master. Yeah, correct. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's not just a quick fix to make your painting look better. Um, <laughs> It, it it's it's quite difficult to not to put anyone to off of like buying one because it is an, an amazing tool but yeah, like you is. said there is there is a learning curve i definitely yeah that, not only do i not think it's cheating by any means i, I would no, recommend I anyone have one I, I would say anyone should get one because I think it, 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 you'll find something that it'll benefit you for I yeah think. it's it's a, it's a staple piece of equipment that has its uses and its purposes um and it's a tool like any other you know you you know you you wouldn't smash a wall down with a screwdriver you'd use a sledgehammer it's exactly the same kind of thing you would use the relevant tool for the relevant job um and that's that's what it is you know it's a versatile tool too i yeah. mean like the airbrush means different things to different people like for me when i was painting in a very different style i was using it for like the zenithal highlighting like all that sort of thing blends inks yeah uh, all that sort of stuff um but now i would say the airbrush is still just as important to me however I purely use it for just putting the first base coat down. Yeah, correct. That's it. Varnishing, um, varnishing, uh, main color on a model. If you do, obviously you've got the Zenith 4 approach of doing it where you put the white or the gray or whatever. I, I prefer doing color modulation where you pick a triad of colors and do dark as some overall color, uh, mid-tone from a certain degree, uh, a highlight color from a certain degree. Um, I, I, there's two ways to get that kind of zenithal kind of look or whatever but um i prefer tonal variance and color modulation as opposed to zenithal but you, it, it has so many virtues to using it and there are certain things you just physically cannot do with a brush that an airbrush will do for you you pointed out ankel he does crazy stuff with it that the, the average airbrush person or user person using a brush could not do you know but he's very proficient with both a brush and also an airbrush but even he will still do a load of things that are very intricate, very refined, very re- that require a brush that even with the skill that he's got with a 1.5 needle or, or that he's got, or 0.5, I think it is, he uses, uh, uh, it, it, you, you just cannot do with with a, a, a brush, if that makes sense. So it's got this intricacy of like overlapping ability of doing things that the other can't do. There's no right or wrong and there's no better or worse. It's just suitable for the task at hand. Um, and it definitely, in my mind, it definitely is not cheating. Like I, I wouldn't see using one as, as a cheat method, you know? Um, so yeah. All right. Thank you very much everyone for listening to Paint Perspective. Please leave a comment below for question of the week and feel free to share with all of your friends, help the podcast grow. That really, really help us out. Uh, follow us on Spotify, iTunes, all those places. Uh, you can take us with you on the go now. And if you're listening on one of those platforms, you can find the video for this on YouTube, on the Siege Studios YouTube channel. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.